Hi, and thanks so much for joining me today. We are doing a first impression as well as a wear test on this new Hourglass Vanish Primer. I picked this up and I thought the best way to really see what this was all about was to do a wear test as well as just apply it to half my face. So I've got this on half of my face. Right now I'm gonna show you application of that um, and see what this looks like directly on the skin as well as with foundation and powder and blush applied. And then we're gonna go in and revisit this, which I just posted. It's the number one de Chanel. It is the foundation. So I had some questions about this and I also wanted to see wear time on this and I thought if there was going to be something to challenge this primer, it would be this. After I filmed and after four hours or so of wear, the oil started to break through and then it was impacting my foundation, not foundation, my concealer, and it was starting to break that apart. I didn't know if it was from the blush that I used or a combination of the blush and the foundation. I wasn't sure. So I wanted to revisit this and also see if we could build this up. So I had a question or two about building this up. Is it possible because it did claim it was buildable and I said, if you want to just go in with concealer and spot conceal. I still think that's easier, but I did build it up. I don't have concealer on today. I put on several layers of this just so we could see what that was like. Test this out and I'm going to do some check-ins throughout the day as well. So let's go ahead to application of this and then we'll do some check-ins. I ordered directly from Hourglass. This is the Vanish Airbrush Primer. Packaging is glass, that's a frosted glass. And it does have a pump on it. Let's see what the texture's like. It has like a gel-like texture. I feel like I've been trying some gel type textures recently. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's just do half the face with primer and we'll do a wear test. So I'm gonna take the primer, it says just to take, let's see, where's the directions? I had directions. The directions are very minimal. There's only a couple of sentences that says, smooth onto moisturized skin with fingertips and follow with your desired foundation. And then it says, avoid contact with eyes. That's it. <laughs> Doesn't specify that you need to use hourglass foundation, it just said desired foundation. So I'm gonna really put this one to the test. I just wanted to mention too, I'm using the AM and PM versions of this Shantikai Gold Recovery. It's the Gold Recovery Intense Concentrate. So I'll give you an update once I'm done. Um, but so far my skin is feeling nice and soft. But I did wanna mention that because I will update at some point. So let's go ahead and take a pump of the Vanish. And on the swatch, it felt really smooth. And then we can talk about the difference between this and the Mineral Veil Primer. It's really smoothing going on. Let me put a little bit on my forehead. So we're gonna do, let's see how long I can wear my makeup today. Probably eight hours I'm anticipating. So we'll really be able to test this out. Applies really easily. So this Vanish Airbrush Primer says it's a translucent skin perfecting primer that smooths skin, controls shine, and provides a blurred airbrushed finish while extending makeup wear, which is something I need because I do tend to get oily up here. Okay, so it dries down to a nice smooth, like a soft kind of finish. Formulated with innovative micro spherical powders. So I do like products that have that, like the um, like the Victoria Beckham primer. You know what, now that I'm saying that, it kind of feels like that. Let me see, the golden one, I have it right here. So I don't have the original Victoria Be Beckham, Victoria Beckham primer, but I have the golden version. So, because I know there are some um, powders in there that help to blur. So interesting. Minimizes the look of pores and fine lines and absorbs excess oil for an instant skin perfect skin perfecting finish. The weightless refreshing gel formula. Oh, I was right, it's a gel formula. So weightless refreshing gel formula helps control shine without leaving skin looking flat for a multi-dimensional, for a multi-dimensional complexions. Is that right? For a multi-dimensional complexions. 
complexion should be <laughs> that lasts all day. It also effortlessly enhances the application look and wear of makeup, which is what I want to test this with because I'm going to test it with this new foundation by Chanel because this is very dewy. I don't know if you caught that I left a note in the description box about this, that if you are oily or live in a humid climate, you might want to wait just a little bit for me to test this to get some really solid information. Let's take a look, close look though, without foundation. If you want to see the blurring effect, so here's no primer versus primer. So it does take down that glow because I do have like a shiny complexion, just, I don't know why, but it's always been like that. It just is shinier and it's not like it's oily or anything right now. It's just the surface looks shiny. And then here is the side with the primer. So you can definitely see a difference between the two. I'm really excited if this does deliver on that longevity piece. And I think the, po oh, you know what? Do you remember me talking about the, this? If you didn't see that video, I talked about how there's an illuminating blurring kind of effect. This appears to have very similar properties to it. I can see again that there is something in there, those micro spherical powders, but just like this foundation, I cannot see individual particles, but I can see an overall effect on the skin. Okay, so if you don't like foundation, this might be a nice one just to put on to kind of perfect the skin. Yeah, it feels really nice too. It dries down, so that is a good thing. So I feel like it's gonna help with the oils because I'm gonna apply foundation on this side. And someone wanted to see this build up a little bit more. So I will try and build this up a little bit more. I said it's not buildable because I really don't think it is that buildable, but we'll try today. Okay, so this is the foundation. Oh yeah, isn't that funny? They have a very similar appearance in terms of refracting the light. Very similar. Oh, that's so interesting. I mean, it's very subtle. It's not obvious or anything, but you can see that. Okay, so, so let's see how this does on this side. So it does feel smoother, like the surface feels smoother. I put a little, a lot <laughs> on there. I used a whole pump, which I, think I used only a half the other day. Now there is something, yes, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of pilling of something, but I went in with a couple of serums and the blue light hyaluronic serum, when you put too much by Chantecaille, that can happen. So I don't know if it's from that or the primer, although, this would be able to tell me. So I don't know if it's interacting with that. Slight pilling though, but more on this side. So that tells me maybe that primer is interacting with that serum. Not quite sure. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. So on this side where I don't have primer, you can see it's shinier, but with this side, I don't have anything settling into any pores here, but here, I'm seeing a little bit of that. And that's a little surprising because you would think the primer would prevent that from happening. But I don't know if you can tell. Let me lean in. Here's the no primer and here's primer. But you can also see it looks smoother over here. So, hmm. Let me see if I can smooth that out. Yeah, do you see there's a little bit of something gumming up here? It's not horrible, but I'm just trying to note what I'm observing here. Let me let that sit for a minute and then I'm gonna build up. So there was also a question between what is the difference between this and the Veil Mineral Primer, which I've tried. It wasn't something that made it into the permanent routine, so um, I don't use it now. I'll put a picture here of what I am talking about. So for the Veil Mineral Primer, that one has SPF 15, so that's one of the bigger differences. It also says the Veil Mineral Primer is a multi-purpose primer which goes beyond traditional formulations, concealing redness, even rosacea, to even skin tone. This does not have that claim. While minimizing the visible look of pores, fine lines, and imperfections, creates a smooth, even surface that foundation effortlessly glides on and stays on for all day makeup wear. First of its kind primer with an airy, silky, cloud-like texture layers onto the skin without added weight or greasy afterfeel. Um, and this one doesn't have that either. Delivers broad spectrum SPF 15 sun protection with mineral-derived sunscreens, titanium, and zinc oxide. So this one does not have that. 
Appropriate for all skin types, even sensitive, blemish prone skin, repels water so makeup looks freshly applied all day long. So that's the difference between the Veil Primer and this one right here. But let's build up the foundation right in the front. Someone wanted to see that, so let's try. I really don't think it built up that much, but I just know sometimes when foundations are built up, it just kind of takes away from their performance. Let's go in with my Shiseido brush that I love. Yeah, I am noticing this foundation is looking better applied with a brush with a primer side versus just going in with clean hands. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Let's see how much we can build this up. Okay, interesting. It does seem to be building up better with a primer underneath now. Because <laughs> right here, it, it definitely is a smoother texture on the pores on the primer side versus here. Okay, so maybe we'll do no concealer today and then that'll really test actually both products. So building up is actually working, but it's taking time. I mean, it's way easier to go in with a concealer, but it is building up better on the side with primer. I'm giving it time though in between layers. And then let's test this without concealer today. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and then we're gonna do some check-ins throughout the day with this primer versus no primer. But here's how it looks right now before I powder. Primer side, no primer. Check the claims on this one. Airbrush Soft Focus Effect. I think you could see that with the micro spherical powders. I think that's what they call them. Let's see, is that what it's called? Yeah, micro spherical powders. Um, translucent finish, yes, but there was that refracting of the light though. So just know that. Smooth and even skin texture. It was definitely smooth and it, I think because of that technology, it did appear more even. Blurs imperfections agree with that. I mean, not a whole lot, but it did blur it. Absorbs oil to balance skin and control shine. We're going to test that. Minimizes look of pores and fine lines. I think we could see that here. Did a pretty good job. And then um, extends makeup wear. We're going to test for that. Enhances the application and look of makeup. Begin and cruelty free. The only thing I got was that kind of that pilling, but again, I'm not sure what that was, but I had more over here than over here. Okay, so let me finish up my makeup. Okay, I was gonna come back with a completed look, but I just wanted to update you. Everything looks kind of stark because I just added eyebrows. I put my eye primer on, primer. I did not conceal my spots, but I did go in with the Perfect Blur Powder Chantecai, my favorite. I want to show you though the finish on powdered skin with the primer versus not. So it got much more matte here, but not in a good way. It, was mattified here, but in a more skin-like way. So I thought that was kind of an interesting take on the primer versus no primer. Building up the foundation with the primer underneath and then powdering actually looks a lot nicer than building up the foundation and then just powdering. So I stand corrected on the building up of this. You can do it with primer, looks really nice and with thin layers, but it does take time. So it is possible right there, so no concealer, uh, but I would recommend using a primer underneath, even though you're supposed to go directly on the skin with this product. I feel like it's kind of asking a lot of this product to be built up, and I think it looks really lovely, just a nice thin veil of foundation. But for those wanting to know about if you could build this up, it is, Buildable. Maybe not the most practical thing, but it is possible. Okay, so now I'll finish the rest of my makeup. Okay, so this is how the makeup looks right after application. And one thing I noticed is that it does look much better on this side with the primer when built up versus over here. I think when the oil starts to come through, it kind of evens everything out, but it does look more refined here just slightly versus this side. This side has a bit more texture on it. So you can really see my pores when I'm that close, but hopefully that helps you see the difference. Um, 
so really happy with this primer so far. I mean, they feel, the sides feel similar once the makeup is on, but so far happy with the primer. And again, no concealer. So it's around one o'clock now, so I'm gonna see how long I can wear this. I know we're gonna have dinner at some point outside, um, and so I'll check in late in the evening. I think I'll try to make it like eight hours, but I'll try to make sure to come back every once in a while so you can see what this looks like. So checking in, I just finished editing the um, Dior palette. <laughs> Can't remember, with the Organza palette. Yeah, so I just um, edited that video. Actually, I think it looks really nice in real life. Um, and the palette that I mentioned, this one, the Butterfly Quartet, if you watch that video, what I love the most about this, and I think that this actually worked for this particular palette because there's this really beautiful green shade in here and I checked and it actually still is available if you were interested. This shade is stunning, um, which is why this these really ethereal colors being kind of subtle work because this is such an outstanding shade right here. So that's why I think these two shades work really well against this. I haven't swatched the organza against this yet, but I just wanted to point that out because that's what makes this palette so special is this green shade. Okay, um, but checking in here, let me see really quickly. Let me use this mirror. So at this mark about four hours in was when I started to notice that this was breaking apart. Now I don't have concealer here, so that might have been what the issue was. Maybe the two things were interacting, the foundation and the concealer, although that Clay Depot concealer has done really well with other foundations in the past, but doesn't mean it's gonna do well with every single foundation. Maybe this is the one where it's like, maybe doesn't do as well. But I have to say, the side that has the primer is looking so much better. Slightly blurred on this side and not as um, enlarged on this side. And the makeup itself is performing better on this side. And I'm really looking here because if I'm gonna see an issue, it's gonna be right here. So yeah, the primer side seems to be holding it better than this side and showing less texture than this side. But overall, the foundation itself, whether it has primer or not, did build up nicely and is holding its own. It's not puckering, really. I'm not seeing that yet, but there's always time. So I'm gonna go, actually we're gonna go out and eat dinner now and then I'll come back and check in. I don't know how many times, depends on when we get back, but I will check in with you, but it's looking, they're both looking really good, um, but the primer side is looking better. Even though we had a little bit of that pilling earlier, um, it doesn't seem to have impacted anything else along the way and is extending the life of the makeup. Okay, so my eyes are red <laughs> because it's late in the evening now. It's been eight hours, so it's almost 10 p.m. So we started a little bit after one and what does that make that eight? No, maybe more than eight hours. So we're like eight and a half hours, yeah. We're more like eight and a half hours in because um, I'm ready to take my makeup off and get ready um, for the evening. So let's take a look at this. I, we went out to eat. I did not powder or touch anything up. The only thing I did was add a little bit more of the lip gloss. Yeah, I added a little bit more of that lip gloss. I really like it. Um, once you get used to that tingling, it's fine, um, but I really like the shade. Okay, so let's take a close look here. I do stand corrected on the building up. I think I said it earlier. You can build up this foundation. Um, where is it? This one. It is possible, and it actually looks quite seamless when you do. You don't get any strange puckering with it, um, which can happen. And I also didn't get anything that changed the color. Sometimes when I build up even concealer sometimes. With so many layers, it starts to look a little bit green. So if you have dark spots, you probably know what I'm talking about. When you add layers and layers of foundation, if it doesn't have a peachy tone to it, typically it will start to look a little bit green or gray when built up. This one, however, built up really nicely and the color stayed true. So I was really impressed with that. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that. So it is buildable. It just takes time. That's what I'm gonna caution you with is that if you do want it, I mean, I might actually try something like this for a more perfected look, just because I really liked the texture um, in terms of skipping concealer and using this to cover my dark spots. It's definitely something I would consider, maybe for like an evening event. But here is the check-in on the <laughs> the primer versus no primer. So here's no primer. You can see how 
I get oily here, right in this area. And I may have touched my um, face there. I really try not to touch my face in general, but I think I had a little itch right there. So I may have scratched that off, but you can see there's definitely more control of oil over here. It's still got kind of dewy, but it is more oily on the side. Just wanna check these claims really fast while you take a close look <laughs> at my skin. Um, airbrush soft focus effect, it definitely had that. Translucent finish, yes, smooths and evens skin texture. It did, it felt really smooth to the touch. Blurs imperfections, I think you could see that. I actually have edited most of this video already, so I got to see the difference and I think it captures it. it the video was able to capture what I was seeing. Um, absorbs oil to balance skin and control shine. So. It controlled shine, not totally though, because you can still see like, let me see if I can just touch this. How does this feel? Let me see if I'm gonna disturb any makeup. I haven't touched my face. Oh, in fact, I forgot to tell you, not only did we go out to eat, we ate outdoors, but then we went grocery shopping and I had a face covering on. So yeah, it did well with a face covering. So I'm just touching this, it doesn't feel oily. It just is dewy looking. But over here, I have a feeling when it feels yeah, it's more oily on this side and I can definitely feel it right here, right next to my nose. And that's where you see the most. This is really only place it feels oily. Here it doesn't feel oily. So I am impressed with this primer. For a an oily T-zone person, you, I think you can see the difference. And that's eight and a half hours of wear. So uh, minimizes the look of pores and fine lines. I think you were able to see that in the video. Extends makeup wear, yes, it did that. Enhances the application and look of makeup, I agree. But again, the brush, the Shiseido brush, I needed this to apply on the side with primer though. So if you do want to use this in a more kind of formal way versus a more casual way, this product here, um, I would use a primer and go in with a brush to apply it on top of the primer. But if you want an everyday quick makeup, just using your hands, I think is perfect. I'm um, also building up with this brush helped quite a bit as well because it was really difficult to do with my um, just clean hands here because it was hard to buff in the edges, kind of like an airbrush kind of way. So that's when this brush came in handy. Yeah, I really like the performance of this. I mean, it wasn't 100% because I did have a little bit of oil there, but that's pretty good for that amount of time. And then again, wearing a face covering for about, I'm gonna say we were grocery shopping for like 30 minutes or so. So that's how long I had that on indoors. One thing I did want to note was, despite the kind of rocky start we had with the primer because of the pilling, and then that settling into pores, I don't know what that was all about because the result was really nice. But I hope that was helpful for you. I will definitely continue to use this, test it out. As you can see, I, don't just stop with a first impression. This is my second run with this uh, foundation since I tried it the other day. So I will continue to use this as well. So you'll get some long-term results. And if you are new here, the premise of my channel, oh, my nice hair here. The premise of my channel is that I try things out and the things that really work well stay in the regular routine and those things that don't work get cycled out. So I do try to identify the best of the best to the best of my ability. So that's why you do see things repeated over and over again, like my Sizzly concealer, like the La Prairie, like the Gucci pencil, like my skincare. And I've had a chance to test so many beautiful products. So really finding the best of the best. So we will see if this makes it into the regular rotation. But that is it for today's video. Let me know if you enjoyed this format, if you were able to see what I was trying to describe, and if you liked me revisiting another product um, in a video that you could see because I am revisiting products in the background all the time, but this time I thought I would document it here for you. So let me know, I would love to know. But that's it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.